romanticism, thoroughly saturated the discourse of modern thinkers. Can you totalize? Can you make things whole? Can you create harmony? If you can't, disappointment. Disappointment is always at the center. Failure is always at the center. But where's the romanticism come from? Why begin with romanticism? See, I don't begin with romanticism. No, you remember what Beethoven said on his deathbed, you know? He said, I've learned to look at the world in darkness and evil and still love it. And that's not romantic Beethoven. This is the Beethoven of the string quartets of 131, the greatest, the greatest string quartet ever written, not just in classical music, but of course it's European forms. Beethoven is the grand master. But uh, string quartet, you go back to those movements, there's no, no romantic wholeness to be shattered as in the early Beethoven. He's given up on that, you see. This is where Chekhov begins. This is where the blues starts. This is where jazz starts. You think Charlie Parker's upset because he can't sustain a harmony? He doesn't care about the harmony. He's trying to completely ride on the dissonance, ride on the blue notes. Of course, he's got harmony in terms of its interventions here and there. But why start with this obsession with wholeness? And if you can't have it, then you're disappointed and want to have a drink and melancholia and blah, 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 blah. No, you see, the blues, my kind of blues, begins with catastrophe. It begins with the angel of history and, 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 and Benjamin's thesis. Of, you see, it begins with the pile of the wreckage. On one pile, on another. That's the starting point. The blues is personal catastrophe lyrically expressed. And black people in America and in the modern world, given these vicious legacies of white supremacy, it is how to, do you generate an elegance of earned self-togetherness so that you have a stick to itness in the face of the catastrophic and the calamitous and the horrendous and the scandalous and the monstrous. See, part of the problem, though, is that see, when you have a romantic project, you're so obsessed with time as loss and time as a taker. Whereas as a Jacobian Christian, I want to stress as well, time as a gift and time as a giver. So that, yes, it's failure, but you know, how good is the failure? You've done some wonderful things. Now, Becca could say, you know, try again, fail again, fail better. But why call it failure? I mean, why not say you have a sense of gratitude that you're able to do as much that as you did? You're able to love as much and think as much and play as much why think you needed the whole thing? You see what I mean? This is even disturbing about America. And of course, America is a romantic project. It's pure diesel, city on the hill, and all this other mess and lies and so on. I said, no, no, America is a very fragile democratic experiment predicated on the dispossession of the lands of indigenous peoples and the enslavement of, of African peoples and the subjugation of women, the marginalization of, of gays and lesbians, that it has great potential. But this notion that somehow, you know, we had it all or ever will have it all, it's got to go. You gotta push it to the side. And once you push all that to the side, then it tends to evacuate the language of disappointment and the language of failure. And you say, okay, well, how much have we done? How have we been able to do it? Can we do more? We're in certain situations, you can't do more. It's like trying to break dance at 75. You can't do it anymore. You are a master at 16, it's over. You can't make love at 80 the way you did at 20. So what? It, time is real. So one question that keeps coming up, or a, a, you know, a phrase, is this idea of the meaningful life. Do you think it is philosophy's duty to speak on this? A meaningful life. How to live a meaningful life. Is that even a relevant, is that even a, an appropriate question for a philosophy? No, I think it is. No, I think the problem with meaning is nihilism is a serious challenge. Uh, meaninglessness is a serious challenge. Even making sense of meaninglessness is itself a kind of discipline and achievement. The problem is, of course, you never reach it. You know, it's not a static, stationary telos or end or aim. It's, it's a process that one never reaches. It's Sisyphean. You know, you're going up the hill looking for uh, better meanings or grander, more ennobling, enabling meanings, but you never reach it. Uh, you know, in, in that sense, you die without being able to have the whole in the language of romantic discourse.
Let me just jump out here in the corner. Okay, you all. Thank you very Thank much. Thanks so much. Thank you, Thank you Ken. You too.